Hi, it's Mark Owen from Moose Marketing NPR, the editor of Punchline. Welcome to Punchline Talks. This morning, I've got a fantastic panel. We've got Nick Brody, Managing Director of Avenue Cars, the Chairman of the Pied Piper Appeal. We've got Ruth Dooley, partner at Hazelwood. This isn't the first time on the show, so welcome, Ruth. We've got Richard Neal, from, a director of Oxbox, and Jenny McLaughlin, from, a finance director from McLaughlin planning good morning everybody thank you and welcome to Punch right. talks really great to see you i'm going to start with you nick this morning okay, uh, nick what's what's caught your eye in the national newspapers please well a couple of things relative to, to myself obviously you always ask me questions about the motor trade um and obviously in a lockdown the motor trade has suffered immensely um some positive things everyone's wait, um, the industry is waiting to come out of lockdown most definitely because i think there's a massive pent-up demand uh, and when you read the papers you can you can see that um, I think click and collect has gone well for the industry, but interesting um, e-cars, electric cars, which uh, in the budget, nothing green actually came out of the budget too much. Um, but um, e-cars last year, and I'll quote you at some figures, which I thought was amazing. Um, the nearly 80,000 new electric eco vehicles were sold privately last year, uh, mostly in southeast London. Um, so there's now 86,000 electric vehicles on the road. Um, so I think... I think when you can we come out of this, I do think we're going to see more electric vehicles sold, even though the budget didn't give anybody any real uh, need to go and buy one. So that's positive uh, for the industry as well, that electric cars are coming. Although hybrids, I still feel, are um, the way forward at the moment until they get the electric cars 100% right, because they're also huge money to buy an electric car. Um, but the industry as a whole, I think, is just, just so waiting to come out and get the showrooms open again. I think people's... Uh, funds are in the bank. I think they want us to ch uh, they want us to ch change their cars. Um, quietly behind the scenes, click and collect has done really well. I mean, I do know a lot of dealerships have done extremely well. Some main dealer franchises, uh, including ourselves, have done okay. You know, we we we, we can't complain at all, uh, even with a big move. So that was that was um, one thing in the papers. The other thing for me with, with my other hat on, Mark, with my charity hat on, um, is the fact that. Um, um, they're, met, they're talking a lot about holidays uh, and the cost of holidays. And of course, this is affecting Pi Piper massively this year. Um, we've got some quotes in the paper today that some holidays will go up 140%. Um, they're averaging out anything between 30, 70%, but 140. And the reason I, I'm, I'm really picked on this is because only yesterday uh, we were asked to um, send a family. So with Pi Piper last year's holidays that we grant to the, the sick and disabled children and their families, obviously we put on hold. Uh, we've got a lot of vouchers with, with travel agents. We've also got, we've had some money back, but now we've got families really a big pent up demand saying, can we go, can we go, can we go? Pi Piper obviously, uh, as you know, is um, the four things that we do in the county. The big, one of the big ones is the children's holidays. So I think we're going to find this year that we are actually going to struggle, not struggle, but we're going to pay a lot more money out this year for holidays. Yesterday, for, for example, a family um, came back in and applied to renew their holiday. It had gone up nearly £1,400, wow. okay. um, which is a lot. So our average holiday spend is about two to two and a half thousand. So when they came back yesterday, and of course, Disney aren't really quoting too many prices at the moment. And this is a UK holiday. It got up an awful lot of money. So I think um, I think that's going to affect certainly us. And I think uh, people want the pent up demand, not just for cars, but also for holidays. We're going to see a massive increase. And I don't blame them, by the way. They've got to get their money back. That they've lost now. Well, also, um, also, the you know, the, the industry itself has been absolutely decimated you know the airport's been decimated every, every, everywhere isn't yeah, it absolutely Just very quickly about the cars i've got that story here that appeared in the in the times it was the the lowest sales in in uh, in 50 year 50 year low um the other thing about that that always uh, it caught my eye as well was in the western daily press there was a, a car dealership closes for good uh robbins and day peugeot and ten yeah, um yeah. that that's closed it's in the western daily press and i would imagine surely surely nick that we're going to see a lot of this yeah we are especially with overheads i mean the the, the the trouble is the motor industry you're not just dealing against your overheads of your dealership you're also dealing with the depreciating assets um whereas you know a lot of businesses buy things their stock won't depreciate the motor trade is horrendous for depreciation uh, the only thing is through lockdown, um, obviously, with we buying a car, not buying, 
um, obviously with uh, the auctions not being open, uh, we've all used our direct contacts to purchase cars and maintain our stock levels. Depreciation hasn't been massive. And also uh, we've seen a huge rise in van, van costs or van values, massive vans, some vans even from six months ago got £2,000 in the book. So, um, yeah, there's going to be dealerships that aren't on it, that haven't managed their overheads well and haven't dealt with their stock issues that are going to go under. Um, but do you know what? There is a lot of strong dealerships out there. And, and I think we're going to see a massive boom come um, the minute we're out of lockdown. I really do. I mean, a lot of people have been sitting on a lot of money and someone who, who might know all about that is, a, is obviously a business expert, someone like Richard. Richard, I'd like to bring yeah. you in now. Could you t just tell us quickly, mate, uh, what you've got in the newspapers today. Thanks, Nick. Um, yeah, morning, Mark. Morning, everybody. Um, there's a couple of fascinating things in the news for me. It's been proliferated, obviously, by the budget and by um, by royal events, which I'm not going to talk about. Um, but um, anyone who knows me would know that um, I, I do like my music, and I was I was drawn to this headline of um, about John Lennon that I read yesterday. Um, the headline is Imagine a Degree in John Lennon's Lyrics. So the couple of stories I've got were, were vaguely educationally related, if you'd bear with me on that one. And the news is, is that um, Liverpool University is about to offer a master's degree in the Beatles. That's going to get them far, isn't it? Yeah, which is a wonderful thing. But that, that was interesting. And it shows you the diversity that is available now to our sort of students and our young people. But the backstory to this was absolutely hilarious. And for those who, those who, who know John Lennon and stuff, they probably resonate with this. Um, and it started with uh, uh, 10 years after John Lennon had left school, despite having slated him the whole time he was there for having too many of the wrong ambitions and misplaced energy. Um, 10 years after he left, they were actually encouraging their pupils to look at the Beatles lyrics and analyze them as a piece of work of creative thinking. Now, there was a young lad at the school at the time, a 15 year old, who actually wrote to John Lennon and said, look, yeah, my English teacher is asking me to, to analyze your lyrics. What, what do you think about this? Now, John Lennon being the irreverent sort of person that he was, thought this was absolutely hilarious. Um, and what he was determined to do is actually get back to his old teacher and send him up, basically. So what he did was he sat down and he thought, right, I need to come up with a song which is going to confuse the heck out of absolutely everybody. And he composed I Am The Walrus. Right. Okay. Many of us will remember very fondly, yeah. uh, full of nonsensical lyrics, one of which is the classic line, Semolina Pilchard climbing up the Eiffel Tower. Now, you know, if you're looking to analyse that, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a remarkable challenge. Now, if you roll forward from 1967 here to 2021, they are, there is an MA degree being offered for students to study that type of work and its yeah. like. But isn't that the problem, though? You know, we, we're going to have mass unemployment. Mass youth unemployment is what we're really worried about. I get people, you know, for, with, with sports degrees mm. and um, um, or, or different types of degrees, like you're talking about, trying yeah. to apply to people like us for a marketing degree, yeah. you know, a, to become a marketing company or PR, because they can't actually get a job. With, no, with some no, of the degrees. No, I, I thought all that sort of rubbish had stopped. To be well, no, it hasn't. And, and, and the university are, are saying that so what makes the degree unique is its future, is analysing the few Beatles in a future facing way, whatever that means, considering the legacy's influence on the music and creative industries in popular culture and within heritage, culture and tourism in the 21st century. Remarkable. Uh, this is a family show, I'd swear it was, but uh, I, I, I'm going to move it on. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Richard. Jenny, welcome to Punchline Talks. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Mark. Thank you, and thank you for having me. And morning, everyone. Um, my news item today is um, I've been a bit greener than the rest of you and done it on my iPad, or lazy and not gone out to the newspapers. I'm quite, you quite lazy, you know. You know. <laughs> the um, Bentley dealers that tore down historic features of, out of their 500-year-old mansion now this story, as a, working with the planning consult in the planning consultancy, obviously resonates with me. But it was just that they've been fined thirty thousand pounds for destroying the property and told to pay a further twenty nine thousand pounds in costs. And it was just almost the um, bizarre naivety of this couple, who, you know, were the business people clearly running a successful car dealership, who thought they could just pull apart a building, but also who. It, the article almost suggests that they pulled it apart. 
I don't know about you guys, but I couldn't just, you know, get out my tools and start pulling apart chimney breasts and everything else. So what builder or who was advising them to have done this? They didn't say, stop a minute, you need some advice on this. Um, and then at the end of the article, it talks about the fact that although they, um, they then did realize the error of their ways and started to try and put things back, because, the, because of COVID, the, the council couldn't inspect their work, which equally seems a bit unfair. You know, there's this whole situation going on there where were they not, was no, were they ill advised? And then actually when they spent money trying to put it out, yeah. it didn't work. <laughs> You got a bit of, I think Jenny, you got a bit of back feed there. there. Yeah. yeah. You can, um, um, let, well, we'll, 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 we'll see if we can sort it out. Thanks, thanks, Jenny. Oh, no, oh, no. no. My, my knee. Knee. Ruth, 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 to bring you in. You in. What have you got? Well, got? Well, I just came out of mute because of that echo, but it's still it's there, still isn't there. it? Um, um, can we carry on talking? Is that better? Yeah. That's better, isn't it? That's better. Okay, well, we're going to talk about the budget a bit later on. So I've been looking at the paper for other stories. And this one um, in the mail caught my eye. It was about uh, what uh, Boris and Carrie have been eating. And I'm delighted to say that it's, uh, it's Gloucestershire food. They've been uh, taking away, uh, having deliveries from Dalesford. Um, of course, the mail is, is saying how expensive it is and uh, um, how it's being sneaked in. It doesn't look as though it's being sneaked into me. It looks like people just carrying boxes into Diamond Street. But anyway, um, but they do make the point that uh, Boris is actually paying for it himself. Apparently, he's been eating Dalesford food since, uh, since he had his uh, a brush with COVID. And it's very healthy, as we know. Um, Dalesford is up, uh, up in the Cotswolds. Um, it's, uh, it's near Kingham. And it's run by Lady Bamford, of course, who's um, the um, JCB tycoon's wife. She actually established it 40 years ago uh, when she wanted to um, uh, produce healthy food for her children. And now it's uh, one of the most sustainable uh, farms and farm shops in, in, in Britain. And it's got lots of credits for uh, its eco-friendly uh, credentials. And of course that will appear to appeal to, um, to Miss Simmons. Um, but it's great to hear that uh, Boris is eating healthily. I mean, he has said that he wants our nation to get more healthy and he's uh, setting an example, albeit a quite pricey one, uh, by buying from our, uh, our wonderful Dalesford in, in Gloucestershire, which is great. This is, that's fantastic news, isn't it? A little bit of marketing for Gloucestershire. Is there anything that, else you've got there, Ruth? Yeah, I've got uh, something from the Times, which is um, about jokes that it takes you a little while to get. And there's been a survey of, uh, of the gags that, uh, that take uh, a little while to cotton on. Now, apparently the one that people just don't get for a little while is um, how do you drown a hipster? Don't know. In the mainstream. I must admit that one passed me by a little bit, but <laughs> it did have some wonderful ones in there, which I really like, like, which I hadn't heard before. A jar of omega vitamins fell on my head when I opened the cupboard. I sustained super fish oil injuries. <laughs> <laughs> And there was this is punchline material, this is, I tell you. <laughs> there's, there's an accountant's one as well, which I thought I'd share with you. Um, if I could help, a cowboy asked me if I could help him round up eight, 18 cows. I said, of course, that's 20 cows. <laughs> <laughs> I like those, I think they're great. So, Very oh, good, Ruth. On, on, the, on, the, on the Richard uh, theme there, how many surrealists does it take to screw in a, a light bulb? A fish. <laughs> you like that one, Richard? I thought that was in tune with your uh, John Ben story. <laughs> I, I love them. I, I love them. I love them. You know, it's so hard finding the jokes for punchline. You know, people don't don't, don't realise how difficult it is. I'm going to I'm going to come back to you in a minute, Ruth, and talk about the budget very quickly. I'm going to go along each of you uh, very very quickly. Start with you, Nick. Then Richard. Then Jenny. Uh, just get your overall opinion of the budget. Was it good? Yes. No. Was there something that they missed out? Nick, start with you. The budget, was it good or bad? Connie, you mate, you got your, your sound. No? Yeah, I think it was, I think um, 325 million pounds we got to, uh, they spent, we've got to get back somehow. I actually think it was okay. I think it wasn't, uh, it wasn't horrendous at all. I think it's a slow, positive way out of getting some money back. Listening to Ruth and she'll go on about it. I've listened to her for 20 minutes earlier. And um, yeah, it's, it's positive, it's positive. Okay. Okay, is there anything you would have liked to have seen? 
Um, Very quick. The corporation tax thing is going to be interesting um, uh, for businesses. Um, I think they've extended furlough. I think that'll give businesses another opportunity to keep staff. I think the, I think the, um, the way they're trying to, uh, for all of us to keep employing, I think um, for the expenditure and the investment for two years is positive. Yeah, I think there's some, there's some positives there. Um, but he's got to get his money back. That's the key here. He's got to get his money Not back. Not spending it, can't. Okay, thanks very much, mate. Richard, was good or bad? Yes or no? Oh, dishy, Richie. Uh, yes, it was. Uh, it was a good budget, I have to say. I thought it was extremely clever. Um, the way there was no obvious tax rises, but there's sort of stealth tax by non increasing of uh, income allowances and uh, pension allowances and CGT allowances and all those sort of things, which means there's going to be a quite an increased revenue over the next few years um, for the for the for the treasury. So it's going to be recouped that way. I thought it was in balance. I thought it was a really good budget because everybody knows the the country has got to have a plan to crawl its way back out of this financially. Should they pay nurses more? Yes. Can um, we afford it? Uh, yes, we can. And, and for me, and, and uh, you know, uh, this is a, a personal opinion, I take it, that, uh, that they shouldn't really have uh, extended that stamp duty concession. It's fueled the housing market. I don't believe in it. It's making properties out of reach for young folk today. Um, lots of people can't afford uh, uh, deposits now and get out of a renting situation. That money could have been diverted elsewhere. So in answer to your question, to the NHS and to the nurses, absolutely. OK, thanks very much. Right, let's bring Jenny. Jenny, good budget or bad budget? What's your thought? I thought it was a very fair budget. I think, as the other two have said, it, we need to recover some of the money we've spent. However, I am quite concerned about such a big increase in corporation tax, um, especially given Brexit, whether, we, whether we'll end up seeing companies choose to set up operations elsewhere, because we've always been quite um, a welcome place to set up business because of our low corporation tax rates. And uh, I think that will also have an impact on small business owners that, you know, it's another way of getting at those entrepreneurs that um, take money by dividends. They're, it's then once again narrowing that benefit to people who haven't necessarily had any um, compensation, well, not compensation, but any help because they work and couldn't get the furlough scheme. They're not PAYE. So it, I think it's, it's going to have some pitfalls along the way. OK, last question. Nurses, should they have got more money? Yes or no? Yes. I think, you know, it's a difficult, um, difficult workplace they work in. It's very challenging. I think they're underpaid. Whether we can afford it. Well, that's the thing. You know, you talk about corporation tax going up. The country's bust. There's a million doctors and nurses. That's one hell of a cost. Um, OK, thanks very much, Jenny. Ruth, let's talk. Let's talk about budgets. Well, the headline on the on the time says it all. Tax rating budget but gives poll bounce to, uh, to Johnson. Now that's all a bit weird. You'd think with the taxes going up, you'd think it'd be an unpopular budget, but actually it was really clever, really clever budget. He stuck to the, uh, the promises, no uh, increases in the headline rates of uh, any of the main taxes, but this freezing thing is so much more than people realize because in a few years time, because all the budget numbers come out, the actual just freezing the allowances and letting inflation bring people in, say into the higher rate bracket, that raises eight billion pounds in three years time. That's a big number. That's a lot of people paying a lot more taxes without realizing it. Um, and taxing larger companies, not the smaller ones, they're gonna be still uh, the 19% if their profits are uh, 50,000 pounds or less. And then on sliding scale up to 250,000 up to the 25% uh, up to the 25 rate. Now that's again, very clever because everybody thinks, oh, that's not me, that's big companies that can afford it. And it's profitable big companies that can afford it. So it's not gonna affect me, so that's all right. And that's the major one, major number one factor when people are reviewing the budget, how's it gonna impact on me? But of course, that's a little bit um, um, nearsighted because large companies, of course, aren't gonna actually pay that extra tax themselves. They're gonna pass it on to their customers in the form of higher prices. So you, we will end up paying those higher rates of tax albeit on an indirect route. So very clever stuff. Um, as far as the sort of the cutting back of the, um, uh, uh, the expenditure in the, in the public sector, that's actually been reduced by 17 billion to the pre-budget uh, levels that were announced. And that is a really big figure, which is why we're sort of seeing 1% for nurses. Now I was listening last night to a talk that uh, Hazelwoods did with, uh, with Philip Hammond. Philip Hammond came on and gave us his take on the budget. 
And what he said is that bit is just not going to stick. People are not going to, the government's not going to get away with it. You know, we're not going back to austerity in the, in, the, in the public sector. There will be resistance and that bit will not stick. So watch this space on the nurses' pay. Okay, um, I have a question. Should he have taxed Amazon, Google and the big internet players? Yeah, I mean, that was a question that was asked of Philip Hammond last night. And he um, said, well, yes, maybe, but actually it's a, it's a drop in the ocean because the point that Jenny was making, they can go where they want. They're not, they're not tied to bricks and mortar. They're not manufacturing in the country. They can go wherever they want in the world, which is what they do, of course. Um, and uh, if it did happen, it would only raise monies, he reckoned, in the, mil in the hundreds of millions rather than the billions. So it, it could happen. It would be very popular, um, but it wouldn't actually have a much economic effect whatsoever. The reason I mentioned that story as well is that Amazon have opened their first shop actually in London. I don't know if you've seen that first cashier free shop. Very clever. That means they're less staff, less overheads, just make more and more money. Um, but we all love it, don't we? We all shop there. Even I shop there. I, I, and I'm a big champion of the high speed, but it just can't help so. Ruth, thanks ever so much. I'm going to come back to you in uh, a little bit later to talk about what's caught your eye in Punch Night. Nick, I'm going to go back over to you, please, sir. Obviously, your old place, place or, or you know, on Avenue, Avenue you've got some bounce back right there. Right there. Um, um, it, it, you're, you've, you've moved, moved you? Yeah, so City Business Centre is never virtually empty, although the press have announced this week that um, they actually started demolition work, but they haven't. Um, there are still three tenants left in the building I've left. We've now moved Avenue Cars, Gloucester Coat in. Um, but um, yeah, the building is virtually empty. Uh, they've not completed the deal with me yet, but I'm expecting probably the second week of April, by the end of March. Bikini bathrooms will be gone by, I think, the 20th of March, speaking to Cormac yesterday, time battery and build engineering by the end of March. So the development is going to go ahead. I think it's a positive move for the area in Gloucestershire and certainly the city centre of Gloucester. Um, yeah, so we're, we're out. Avenue Cars has now moved out after starting life at Mercia Road some 33 years ago. We're now out at uh, premises I've had since 2003 at Birdwood. And uh, we're almost there. Uh, so we've moved out and uh, another era begins, Mark. Well, well congratulations. congratulations. And it was a, a big move for you guys. I'm uh, yeah. looking forward to the same thing. Well, it's only been five years to, to sort the deal with the council um, to sort uh, Submeadow Road and uh, Lantoni Road out. So it's been a long old haul, I can tell you. Five years? Is that all? <laughs> it's all, it's all five years. I won't ask you what your opinion on the council is, mate. It's a happy <laughs> show. I love them. I love them. I love them. Okay. <laughs> we'll come back to you in a second uh, for what you picked out on Punchline as well. Richard. Hopefully you can hear us. Richard, okay. Oh. Um, congratulations to you as well. You're celebrating a year in business. You started your business with Hayley a year ago, the start of the pandemic. I remember reading the, the story, thinking, yeah. oh, my God, these two are bonkers. Yeah. Uh, how's it gone? It's it's well it's been it's been not what we planned because uh, Opsbox is is one next week and the pandemic is one the year the week after, um, so yeah our timing was just just immense but um, yeah we had, like everyone else we had to sort of uh, adjust the way that we were operating, um, and I and I think that probably and you know with changing circumstances of the world and everything that was going on with with businesses and and furlough and C bills loans and banks backs and stuff we did have to adjust. And I think that's just helped solidify the offer that we've got. And um, we now see a year on that the need for business general advice, help, support, guidance, and a bit of common sense approach together with a bit of sort of help with financial sourcing is still very much alive and well and, and um, serving ops box well and hopefully will do into our second year and, and beyond that. Well, I think you've managed to really raise your profile since, you know, a, a company that's been in business only a year, you seem to be everywhere you know congratulations on that well done mate um i'm going to go quickly to jenny because i'm running out of time time always seems to go very fast in the show jenny the planning and um the sort of industry that you work in has there been any sort of sea changes or anything like that or what what have you been you guys been up to absolutely in the last couple of months we're seeing a, a huge increase in inquiries and projects that were perhaps mothballed last year coming to fruition Lots of stuff going on, lots of um, positivity in the marketplace, and it's really refreshing to see. Got some exciting projects lining up really well, and um, yeah, it's it's very positive. It's good to see, as I say, good to see. Yes. Now, one thing you guys in planning, you, you say, well, what projects have you got? And you always say, well, I can't tell you. It's always been we can't tell you. Well, we can't tell you. It's not, you know. 
Well, whilst we've been whilst we've been talking, I have had permission to say that we're working on the new school at Bishop's Cleave, which is pretty exciting stuff. It'd be nice to see that developed. It's it's there's been problems as to where the school might be placed. That's been one of the delays in that. Um, but that would be really good to see a new school where there's a need. Well, the Bishop's Cleave's got bigger and bigger. I mean, it's 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 not is it? It's not a village anymore, is it? It's not it's, really. It's, no. what, what, what is Bishop's Cleave now? It's huge, huge place. Thank you, Jenny. All right, I'm going to get back over to Ruth. Ruth, what, what's caught your eye in Punchline? This is the, 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 the wrap up now. What's caught your eye in Punchline this week? Well, I was looking at Hazelwood's budget predictions, which was <laughs> on, uh, that. <laughs> on Tuesday. And guess what? Predicted probably everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if anybody wants to um, uh, read about the budget on the uh, Hazelwoods website, we've got Tax Untangled, which is the uh, uh, pamphlet that we put together uh, on the budget day. So we all sit down and write little bits of it, put it together and try and put it in a very manageable format. So go to our website and have a look at our, uh, our summary of the budget if you want to know what happened. But sure. apart from that, apart from that, the other thing that caught my eye was um, was uh, about potholes and uh, and the spending by Gloucestershire County Council 150 million for the uh, for the roads and that is 31,000 lorries full and 17 percent of the roads in the county and 130,000 potholes have been filled but it's still a constant battle as we all know to keep those uh, potholes filled because I'm, I'm a cyclist and uh, potholes are a nightmare aren't they when you're when you're cycling and uh, so all credit to the council for keeping on filling those holes up. And of course, that takes us back to the Beatles again, doesn't it, Richard? With uh, all those holes in Blackburn, Lancashire. <laughs> ah, day in the life, Ruth. The day in the life. You, don't need, you guys don't need me anymore. I could go now. <laughs> well, as we've got a link over to Richard, I'm going to go to Richard. What's uh, what's caught your eye in punchline? I love the plug, by the way, Ruth. Yeah, yeah very good. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Um, a couple of things. Uh, so one th one thing that I picked up from um, from Punchline this week was the Renishaws news. To be honest, I thought that was uh, I thought that was really quite nice in in a way that. Uh, David McMurtry and John Deere now both in their 80s have decided to sort of sell their majority share in Renishaws. And I mean, they've been, you know, I just wanted to reflect on what they've brought to Gloucestershire over, you know, 50 years in terms of employment, in terms of profile, in terms of apprenticeships, in terms of, you know, whatever they've done, that it's been a fantastic success story for Gloucestershire and a fantastic success story in engineering and scientific technology. Um, and I just thought it was worth mentioning that, you know, where they've come from as a, as a startup situation to where they are now is fantastic. And, uh, you know, you can't praise them too highly. Did 13,000 ventilators as part of the challenge last year? Absolutely fantastic. And one thing, if I may, Mark, that wasn't in Punchline this week, I would not like to let this occasion go past without remarking that Cheltenham Town have ascended to the top of the League Two table, and I didn't see it in Punchline, but it made me very happy. Well, I'm, 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 I'm speechless. <laughs> Jenny, I don't know what to say about that, mate. Jenny, <laughs> no, neither do I. <laughs> what's caught your eye in Punchline? Um, the, the headline that Britain's licensed premises are closing at more than one an hour. I mean, that's a phenomenal figure, isn't it? To You know, what's going to happen to all those um, premises? And actually, what's going to happen when we're all allowed out of lockdown and need a drink? You know, it's such a, a, a phenomenal figure, really. I, I know it's, it's terrible, isn't it? I, I always worry about my local pub, which is the Avenue on Bristol Road. I, I just... Uh, Looking forward to having a pint, a pint there, and uh, watching uh, watching a Wales game, or, or, you know, on there again. Watching but Wales win, watching game. Wales win again. Oh, <laughs> let's move on to to, to Nick. Oh, Nick. Well, Mark, Mark, as we haven't got much time, I just thought your um, Punchline magazine was brilliant, and I got your present, Mark. I show you here. I think when we on the move, I found every single Punchline wow. magazine. <laughs> I've got every edition. So if you've lost yours, I've got them here, OK? That's quite a lot, you know. It's, it's 10 years, you know, mate. <laughs> I know, I've got them all. Well, um, I, 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 I feel quite quite chuffed about that. Thank you ever so much. <laughs> and Thank although you. we've burnt and, and we've shredded so much stuff uh, we've had for 20, 15 years at, at uh, Hempstead, I thought, well, I couldn't I couldn't shred these, so I've kept them for you, Mark. That's, that's very kind. It's quite funny, I actually. Thought I thought your annual was really good, but especially the way you've designed it on the computer, you can read it and turn the page. I thought it was brilliant. So congratulations on that, mate. That's very kind. You're, you're allowed back. Right. Anyway, thanks very much, guys. We've run out of time today. Thanks for joining Punchline Talks. Pleasure. My panel. Cheers, Bye. Bye.